good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from whichever part of the world you are watching from. And welcome to what is already the very last session of Circularity TV. Now, for this special session, we will reflect back on the past 24 hours of this conference, and we will look forward to the road be beyond uh, the WCEF Plus climate. And to do this, I am joined by two incredible guests here with me uh, in the studio. Starting off, I'm extremely happy to welcome you, Minister van Veldhoven. Uh, I've heard that you've had an extremely hectic <laughs> schedule these past 24 hours. Oh, so it was a fantastic schedule. Yeah. Only, yes, only fantastic sessions. Indeed, I can imagine that it's so much to do. And how are you feeling? Are you inspired or optimistic? Absolutely, I feel fantastic. And it's, uh, I feel very inspired. And it's been so wonderful to hear from all of these guests from all over the world that are working so hard to make the circular economy reality worldwide. And that's exactly where we need to go. So you can only be inspired after such a day. Yeah, indeed. I feel like that's what keeps the energy going. Uh, I feel like it's 90% uh, inspiration and 10% coffee that everyone is running <laughs> on uh, at this point. Uh, and joining us in this session as well, we also have Evke van der Waal, who is our audience liaison for this conference. Uh, to be really honest, Eve, can I actually go way back uh, in our times as colleagues, as youth representatives for the Netherlands? Yeah, when we were young. Yeah, right? now we're, uh, we're, we're only looking young, but we're uh, very uh, old at this point. <laughs> no, but Evke, you will be reflecting on the thoughts of our viewers at home and uh, sharing your perspective on that as an environmentalist. Uh, nice to have you here with us as well. Very happy to be here. Thank you, Ajar. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and as we said, in these past 24 hours, uh, a lot has been shared, many interesting insights uh, into what a circular economy can do in the road towards climate mitigation. Uh, and that is why we also want to ask you, our viewers watching from home, uh, to share with us in the chat box what your personal highlight was from this conference, uh, whether that's a, a speaker that you saw that was very inspirational or a session in itself. Please do so, and then we will get back to that later on in the session. Uh, but maybe, Minister van Veldhoven, I can start with you, because do you have uh, a personal highlight after these past two days? I must say the two days were one big highlight. But if I have to mention maybe two, it was, I think, the session with all of the UN agencies that have so clearly shown their leadership in bringing all of the agencies together, the entire UN system that's going to work with the, the opportunity that circular economy provides for combating those three large crises that we have to face. Yeah. Biodiversity loss, climate change and, p and pollution. And circular economy is an instrument for all of those. And they, they really came together and said, we are going to work on this. We're going to use this solution in all of those agenda. So I think that was really, really inspiring. And the next to that, of course, um, the voice of the young people with yes. their hope and determination, especially that. I love that. And uh, we, we are going to need that so much. Yes. So I also hope that many of my colleagues around the world will follow my, uh, my plea um, to give them a seat at the table of decision making, because we're deciding about their future, right? So yeah. they need they own a place, let's say. Yeah, yeah, indeed, I very much love that. Uh, we also had a session earlier and, you know, young people are not just the, the future, but they already are the, the current generations uh, living in these uh, in these circumstances. And uh, maybe if I can ask you as well, what was, what was your personal highlight? Uh? Well, I think it's quite difficult to have one highlight, but um, <laughs> I would, yeah, yeah, I would just like to zoom out a little bit because what I noticed is, this diversity of different sectors and this intergenerational collaboration that we see during these two days mm -hmm. or the 24 hours. Um, I think, Hajar, we already talked about this sometime in our uh, youth representative period, but you know that we have to watch that we don't function in bubbles. Yeah. Um, so nobody falls in between of these bubbles. And I think this has been a really good example of how we can make it really inclusive to make this transition together. Yeah. So that's been a major highlight for me. Yeah, I really agree. It's all about getting the general public on board as well. And th that's actually what I liked about this session that we saw so many people, uh, you know, interacting on social media via the chat and being included. Uh, and, and talking about social media, Evke, uh, yes. as our audience liaison, do you have uh, some some interesting things you came across. I do, I do. And I was actually present at the session which uh, Ms. Uh, Inger Andersen from the uh, UNEP, the executive director, mentions. Uh, Minister van Veldhoven, you are mentioned as well in this tweet, but I would just like to highlight it. Um, she says that working together at the UN is about working to our strengths. Circular economy is central to the SDGs and therefore to our efforts to build a resilient, sustainable and just future for all. A huge thanks to you, she says, and for bringing us together at the WCEF plus climate. Yeah. And some amazing photos. Indeed, oh, that, that really is uh, amazing to see. And quite lofty words, Minister. Uh, would you like to respond uh, 
Well, I think Inger is also really a role model and she's done some fantastic work. Uh, she outlined a fantastic strategy that has this very clear vision. Um, so I would say a huge thank you back her, to her and all of her team and the other teams at the other UN institutions. And that is why I really highlighted that as one of the, I think, the great points, bringing all of the institutions together, also mm -hmm. sketching how through their entire process they are determined to work on this. And that can only be ins inspiration for all of us yeah. to want to join them in making sure that we work towards that circular economy. Yeah, indeed. I think, uh, it's as you said, we have to do this together. And yeah. these are the kind of moments that show uh, uh, the optimism in going forward. Uh, Ifke, uh, I was curious, do we already have some uh, answers on personal highlights? We do, we do. Um, I think one that stands out for me, because we mentioned, mentioned the young people as well, is give the youngsters a seat at the table. Uh, I mean, there's two youngsters at this table already. Yeah. I think we're doing an amazing well, job. Youngsters, uh, weren't we a bit No, <laughs> no, come on, no, it's okay. no. Um, let's see, uh, great to see the dr keeping the drumbeat going atmosphere, um, love the different parties coming together. I hear a lot of, uh, you know, the same vibes here. And yesterday also in the materials matter session, panelists mentioned that it's time to race to the top instead of race to the bottom mm. of price. And that's really a punchline for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah. And for circular economy, because it's all about staying high up yeah. in the value chain instead of degrading materials. So yeah, indeed. well put. Yeah. Thank you, audience. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much to our audience. And keep on sending in your comments uh, and questions. Uh, now, I think it's time to go on to the deep philosophical stuff here. Uh, because, Minister van Veldhoven, I am actually really curious what kind of role circularity plays in your daily life. Do you have uh, a toothbrush that you've been using for <laughs> decades or clothes that you uh, recycle? Well, I must say that I really try to, to work circular in my, my private life too. I, I separate, uh, well, nearly all the materials that you can think of, uh, cans and plastic and paper and glass and, uh, and of course, uh, biological uh, food waste. Uh, so we're trying to, uh, to, be, to have as little actual waste as possible. And especially with plastics, once you, once you start separating your plastic garbage from the rest, you're like shocked at the amount of plastic that you yeah. use. And that in turn becomes an incentive to try and see if you can use less plastic. Um, and I think in countries across, th across the globe, we now have legislation that bans single-use plastic or single-use plastic bags or deposition schemes for single-use plastic bottles. So all of this makes a huge change also in your daily life. Uh, and it's basically very easy. And also yeah. clothing, you know, clothing that no longer fits you or no longer that you no longer like, you can give it away or you can sell it. And I think it's fantastic also to see that there's a really a new market there. And some, some, a misfit for, for me can be a jewel for you and yeah. vice versa. Uh, and so we should try to share in that sense more. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's it's like changing this mind mindset of uh, you know waste being a byproduct or waste to seeing something that actually holds value and can be reintroduced. Uh, maybe Evke, uh, how do you incorporate circularity in your daily life? Well, I was just thinking maybe we should do a closet sale or something like that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> um, no, I I think for me it's like in everything that I do. So I travel by public transportation as much as I can. It's my eating pattern, um, the clothes that I wear. Um, but also asking the right questions, I think, is something that I've put in practice to yourself. Like, do I really need this product or can I buy it secondhand or in a different way? Can I repair it? Yeah. Exactly. Or who do I support by buying uh, this particular product or item? Yeah. Um, and by asking the right questions, I'm also curious, uh, Minister van Veldhoven, um, the importance of scaling up is really big, as we know, the urgency of the matter that we're dealing with. Yeah. So I'm really curious on your vision of how we can ensure that uh, circular economy becomes more mainstream because eventually, like we talk about, we need everyone on board on this. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and fully, fully right. I mean, it's fantastic that we've had this, this period where we've been piloting also in the Netherlands, and all of the piloting is important because you create, let's say, dynamic and you create proof of concept, but now we need to really scale up. And I think in the Netherlands, we, are, we have reached some kind of a tipping point, and now it's time to push over to, to make sure that we, get, that we tip. Uh, so what do we need? We need more innovation, but we also need ambitious targets targets. And that's, for example, why I've been pleading throughout this conference also for a mandatory amount of recycled material in new materials, mm. because then you create a market and that changes the entire production and consumption chain. So I think it's these kind of legislative and financial incentives that we really need to install into the working dynamics of our economy to really make that scale up change. And I think it's really high time that we start doing that. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe in light of that, uh, 
You know, I mean, we've seen so many partners getting together, amazing commitments that have been made, and uh, I think a lot of optimism in the sessions that we saw. Uh, but how can we make sure that we actually walk the talk after this conference and that, as you said, uh, we got to keep it going up, we got to keep that energy going? Yeah. What would the the most perfect road uh, post uh, WCF CFF plus climate look like for you? Well, this is just a stepping stone, of course, in a very long process. Uh, and it's fantastic to see that, for example, the Italians have taken up the topic for their G20. In the fall, we will have the Canadians that have the WCEF again, and they will be focusing very much on the link with biodiversity uh, and finance. I think there's a lot of work going on on finance. And then, of course, at the next COP, we need to ensure that we spread the message again, that we work in, in a side session, for example, on bringing this further. There's so many concrete steps that we have to take together. So that is why uh, we have to keep this drumbeat going. Yes. And I think the action statements that we outlined today with 50 commitments um, is a fantastic list, which is transparent, which is accountable. So, and these are all voluntary commitments. Nobody pushed anyone. These are the things that we have committed ourselves to do. And those are usually the strongest commitments. So I have every mm -hmm. confidence that we will see a lot of actions moving forward. Yeah, indeed. That is amazing to see. And it's, as you said, it's voluntary. So that uh, shows the intrinsic motivation. I Absolutely. think that's ongoing. Uh, now, for this next segment, I would love to invite Femke van Voorthuizen, uh, who is our visual artist, to join us here at the table. Uh, because uh, during these past 24 hours, uh, a lot has happened. And what better way to see uh, what we've been experiencing in all the sessions than having our own professional visualizer here? Because Femke, as I understand it and have seen it uh, during the past sessions of Circular TV, you have taken all the thoughts and ideas, the inspirations, and uh, actually used that to make a drawing of what has happened. Uh, what has that process been like for you? Oh, it was great. It, it's it's so inspiring to see and I, I almost couldn't stop drawing. <laughs> <at some laughs> so, uh, so that was really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing to hear. I think that only accounts for all your uh, enthusiasm and also the, the inspiration that has been shared in this session. Uh, so I would say that we would no longer keep our viewers in agony and reveal your drawing uh, during these past uh, five sessions that have already taken place. Uh, we can see them pop popping up over here. Now, if we look closely, we see um, the looking forward session, the very first session of Circular TV. Uh, in the second session, we, we talked about financing, uh, uh, how that can provide urban tools for cities, Rotterdam there in the bottom corner. In the third session, with our two chef cocks from Ghana and the Netherlands, and then uh, session four, the We Are Tomorrow uh, global partnership with all the young people. And of course, session five that took place today with the three young entrepreneurs who work uh, on plastic waste management and, uh, and circularity. Uh, now, Femke, maybe I can ask you to take us through uh, some of the things you've put into the drawing. Yes, well, I drawn, I've drawn the different sessions around the, the Earth to emphasize that it's a worldwide responsibility, um, circular economy. And also when we zoom in, uh, for instance, with the first session, uh, we talked about an uh, action-oriented uh, uh, agenda to accelerate the circular agenda. Yeah. So I visualized a little turtle uh, that turns into a rabbit, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for instance. And also uh, we're working through uh, um, the gears uh, towards a cooled down earth. Um, so that was session one. And also in two, um, yeah, uh, Mr. Bonte uh, spoke about uh, the, the yeah, being bold in Rotterdam and also said you have to include everyone uh, and lower, lower barriers uh, by uh, also creating a mind shift uh, for people. Uh, and also uh, what, I, uh, what, what I was inspired about was uh, the low carbon landing. Yes. So on the roadmap, the Circular City Funding Guide. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, w w why I draw a, a map uh, with the low carbon uh, landing. Yeah, 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 that's amazing to see. And uh, maybe uh, Minister van Velthoven, do you recognize any of the sessions? Uh, in oh the yes, absolutely. And I, I recognize many of the uh, the points that did. Maybe if you want to sh show the big picture again, yeah. um, what I what I liked very much is the fact that you, ha you put down the Eiffel Tower because I think we all started this idea of this conference to get everybody understand that you know if you want to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement. There's no way of doing that without circularity mm -hmm. because the circular economy is about 20% yeah. of our overall target. Um, so that Eiffel Tower is there for a very, very good reason indeed. Uh, and also all the wheels that are interlinked. Uh, we will need to move on all of them to get the circular economy moving. And of course, indeed, also the, uh, the CO2 related lending. We need to change the incentives into in the system and then we can make we can pick up lots of speed. So uh, yeah. 
Very well done. Yes, yeah, congratulations. Yeah. I wish yeah. I could draw like this. Yeah, <laughs> oh, same, <laughs> same, same indeed. Uh, and Ivka, maybe uh, do you want to uh, respond? Yeah, I think first of all, Femke, this is amazing. Um, you. And I, what I really love about this is that it really shows the different levels that we have to operate in in the uh, circular economy. So it's a global challenge as much as it is an individual challenge and an individual mindset and you know even if it's one person you always create these ripples around you to the people around you and eventually that could be a global ripple um so and a local and a local opportunity too if you look at the city level yeah, the city definitely. level is an excellent level for changing mm -hmm. things and changing changing circles so it is it's it's all of that and it's also a local opportunity yeah, yeah. indeed yeah. and i love that you also drawn all the the ingredients that we saw the chef cox using uh, in uh, uh, in the uh, session 3 i see the the the, the puree that uh, tahir here live uh, displayed on the platter why did i miss that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i must say i ate it in the evening and it was so amazingly good so indeed it was shared a little bit with, with Evka, yeah. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> Next time we will invite you as well, Minister, to, uh, to have a little <laughs> taste. <laughs> now, indeed, and we see indeed all the young people that joined us uh, from all over the globe. Some uh, somebody from Chile as well in the middle of the night uh, for the for a session earlier this day, and of course uh, during session five we saw people, uh, young entrepreneurs actually, who implement circularity really at the core of what they do as uh, as young business owners, and that was really inspiring to see uh, what they can do very concretely with circular applications. Uh, in practice. Uh, now, uh, to everyone uh, uh, watching, if you want to see the work of Femke, make sure to check it out uh, via our website, WCF Plus Climate. Uh, but of course, also on our Twitter account, which is the same tag at WCF Plus Climate, and make sure to check out the full picture of the drawing uh, afterwards. Now, having said that, I want to thank you once again so much for all your uh, hard work in the drawing, Femke. Uh, and we are already almost nearing the end of this session, which is why we will go over uh, to Ikena Azwike, my colleague on the other side uh, of the studio. Let's see if we can get a, a video connection with Ikena. There you are. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, Hajar. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, 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 are you ready for the final session? I heard some rumors that you were going to do backflips and saltos for it. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, you wouldn't expect any different, would right? You? I mean, that's all up in your arsenal uh, to do. So uh, we're really looking forward. Uh, and, and how has the conference been for you up so far? Uh, it's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. Um, I feel like there's been an unprecedented amount of talking uh, and um, committing to initiatives around the circular economy. So um, a lot of optimism um, and still a long way to go, but um, we're on the right path. So I'm really happy. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, everybody can tune in for the official closing of the World Circular Economy Forum uh, over at uh, my colleague Ikena Azuike's uh, studio uh, in about, I think, uh, 15 minutes uh, for the people to see. Now, with that being said, uh, we are unfortunately uh, already at the end of the Circular TV. As they say, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, it was an amazing honor to have you here with us. I want to thank all of my guests uh, who joined me in these past 24 hours, whether that, that was physical here in the studio or whether they were virtually included in the conversation. Thank you to each one of you. And of course, a big thank you to you, the audience. It has been mentioned so many times before, but we know that the clock is ticking and especially that this needs to become a mainstream thing that we all take up so that it was more than inspiring to see all of you join in via the chat and social media so thank you for that uh, and I think one big round of applause uh, like this for the people the team working behind the scenes on this session uh, you can't see them right now but they're all in the room with us and without them this wouldn't have been possible uh, so a big thank you to all of you I see some of them waving there uh, yes <laughs> we can do this for them now I have really enjoyed being your host for the sessions of Circular TV. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, and then uh, I want to thank you for being here and I wish you all the best of luck as you join in uh, uh, for the closing of the World Circular Economy Forum Plus Climate 2021. And of course, one big final thanks to our guest of honor, <laughs> uh, Minister Van Veldhoven. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Yes, and we hope to see you uh, at the next session. Mogen doorkletsen.